Hey guys, thanks for joining me again to talk about our newest project. I'm just going to talk over the, the major points and uh, give you some images to inspire you as well. So we've already started on your first minor projects this time, which are our two color wheel studies. Remember to let yourself be really open rather than trying to land on those 12 perfect hues. Um, hopefully you'll end up with 24, 36, or even 102 different hues on each of these wheels, just letting yourself get to know the paint, um, observing their relative strength, value, and intensity of each pure color and color mixture. Make sure that once you've done each of the color wheels, one with the cadmium red, yellow, and cobalt blue, and the second with our gem tones, the magenta, yellow, and uh, yellow ochre, and cerulean, after you've completed both of those, you want to make sure you spend a lot of time looking at them and writing down your notes and observations in your sketchbook. Try to really get to understand the, the kind of personalities, or we might say flavors, of these different colors and what their potentials are, because you're feeding your instincts so that in our final, our next projects, and much you know longer after this class is over, that you'll really know these colors and know how to use each type of paint to arrive at the colors that you're trying to get to. Um, we also are going to be doing color research, just like before, only actually a little more simple this time since we won't be dealing both with the color and image, or sorry, the image in color and in black and white. Um, this time you're going to be choosing quality images of fine art or graphic design that meet the following criteria. So choose one image that is a monochromatic theme, one image that is a triadic color scheme, that is um, either a primary or secondary color scheme, so three colors that are equidistant on the color wheel. Um, choose one that is uh, exemplifying a complementary color scheme and then your last one will be an analogous color scheme. So just four images each with these different schemes um, and then with these you'll create um, your five to eight hue palette for each of the images using our color aid paper. Okay? Make sure you label them and then again as always write down your own notes and observations on how the color is, is functioning in the image. Now on to the major project. Okay, so this time we're going to be looking at the work of an artist named Sanford Wormfeld, um, whose colorful images overwhelm us with simple design but compelling use of color. Um, of particular interest to us this semester is his control of color, his ability to use pure color in organized pattern to create nearly seamless transitions across a spectrum. His work really relies on optical mixing, so it's that phenomenon where the colors, um, for example, strokes of red and yellow, blend in our eyes and end at a distance to appear orange in that case. Um, the careful arrangement of contrasting color also creates a sense of luminosity in his compositions. So take a look at a few of them. Um, one of his largest pieces and really kind of the culmination of his work was this um, three-dimensional room and you actually can enter into it through a, a staircase below so that when you're in it it is a literally a seamless spectrum around in this circle and this is what it looks like as you're kind of across the way it just looks like this beautiful almost like colored light across the back but as you get closer to it I really appreciate these photographs letting us see in, um, in detail how the image is actually made. It's actually made in this case by these kind of stripes of color that change their width and dimension and then s and slowly augment their color and hue as they go around. So it seems seamless from a distance but then as you get up close you actually see how he's made the image. I'll show you a couple other ones. Take a look at this one. And if you sort of are seeing this painting from a distance or, or for now looking at the computer, you can kind of squint your eyes. Um, you see how he, uh, the whole image looks like this beautiful, just gentle gradation from left to right and top to bottom. But then if you look closely and, and, and focus, you see how he's alternating the reds. And it's the same red that continues on, but it gets in thinner and thinner stripes as it goes across, while these kind of yellow greens start from thick stripes and get thinner and thinner as they go across and so it kind of creates this great almost like a basket weave going across the whole composition just slowly progressing the colors and their dimensions across but they really feel like such luminous compositions I mean this one almost feels like it's lit from within right an interesting aspect of his work also is the way that he uses the edge so he puts on this edge sort of the reds 
and oranges that actually finish the internal composition on the upper right. And then on the upper right edge, he puts the kind of greens and yellow greens that are actually on the internal corn in the lower left. So sort of juxtaposing the edges. So you really get to see the contrast from where you began to where it finished up. Right? And here again, some nice close up on the left and then kind of a distant shot on the right. So that's, we're taking our kind of starting point from Wormfeld's work, this idea of really controlling, selecting and controlling our color, considering optical mixing, um, the layering and juxtapositioning of color so that it creates this kind of beautiful progression across a whole composition. And for this project, we are staying non-representational, so we're not going to use any imagery. You may choose to use the grid method. You might use um, more like stripes, as Wormfeld does here. But you're going to keep it pretty, si pretty simplified so we can still focus really on hue and not get too worried about more complex compositions. We're just going to let the color speak for itself. So here it is. For this major project, you'll work in three groups of six um, that we'll select in class. Um, and you're going to be creating a non-representational composition that is a seamless spectrum of color. After deciding on your composition and color theme, you'll be able to, re you'll be responsible, each will be responsible, to paint a 12 by 12 section of an overall composition, which together with the whole group, you'll be making a composition that's 12 by 72 inches. So it's going to be this great long um, progression, this long continuum. Um, you're going to use half inch or one inch squares. Um, uh, it could be a grid or, and or stripes to create a spectrum of color in pure hues and their values. You have to use at least two different hues, but you are not required to use all 12. For example, you might choose to focus on cool colors or an analogous range. The seamlessness of the work will be dependent on the way in which you slowly integrate and transition between colors, staying aware of how the color proportions blend in your eyes. You might find inspiration from your work in, say, extreme close-ups of images of a sky or a sea or landscape. I've had students take um, more general themes of the different seasons um, to, as a way to sort of organize their thoughts and their color ideas. So you can find a lot of different ways to kind of get inspired for, for your composition here. Um, here are some individual works. Um, not group works, but individual works of prior students that relate to what we're trying to do. So even while you're having a, spec a continuous spectrum, it is okay to have some subtle elements of design, for in this case, a um, student has this kind of diamond shape in the center. But you still see the kind of continuous transition from color to color as he goes across. Or in this one as well. And it can be really interesting to play with spatial ideas, so I love the way that these red um, kind of X's or red crosses kind of hover in front of the background, which feels like this great um, gradation from yellows to orange and back to yellow again. This was a group of students last semester who um, chose to work together and thought about those seasonal themes. So this was four different students' work, and they wanted them to come together, um, but each sort of worked somewhat individually on these. So the project has changed a little bit coming into the semester, but this is a nice um, kind of image to be inspired by. All right, so that is the, the, the um, project. So what you're going to be doing over this weekend is each of you individually need to come up with at least five quality ideas, right? So if that means you come up with five bad ones and then you come up with five good ones, so be it. But when you come into class on Tuesday, I want you to have five ideas that you're really excited about, that they're sketched out in color or painted out in color in your, in your notebook, so that when you get assigned to your group, you'll be able to say, here are my five ideas. You'll be able to talk through everyone's ideas, and then you'll have to select um, the best one or one of the best ones um, to actually use as your, your group idea. Okay. Here's our over, um, overview. So February 4th, you'll come to class with your five ideas and begin working your groups. We have the next two days to work. And then the 13th, we'll, we'll start toward our next project on saturation. Your hue and spectrum group project will be due on the 18th, along with a midterm, which will include a vocabulary test and a, and a color matching test. So I'll actually be giving you 
color chips for you to have to mix the paint and be able to match that color. So all this color mixing is a good practice for that color test coming up in a few weeks. A couple other artists you might draw inspiration from. Now these are all artists who are um, not doing exactly what we are assigned, um, but they are artists who you, you might find inspirational in terms of their use of color, um, some of them in their use of design. Um, Gerhard Richter, this artist here, German artist, has such a wide variety of work, but if you look more at his abstract and non-representational work, you might find some interesting ideas there. Um, and of course, you're not limited to these at all. These are just some places that you might start with. So good luck, and I look forward to seeing what you guys come in with next week.